Well, hello, my friends. I think it's time we check in again at the Goblin's lamppost and run our first session of our tavern keeping from the broken cask. Now, I have a little bit to help us visualize this as we play. I love role playing games, I love them. I'm also, though, a very visual person, so I thought it would be fun if we blinged things out a little bit. And one of the things I love to use is a site called Two Minute Tabletop. I'll put a link to them down below. I think I support them on Patreon and you can buy stuff through their website as well. They make amazing battle maps and character tokens. So I found this cool desert oasis city that I thought the Goblin's Lamppost could definitely be situated in. We have our oasis, we have our nice little path going through, we have a little, I think of this maybe as the market space, we have some tents, this is definitely some sort of big, you know, governmental entity type body. We have some people living here and then back in the corner here, I thought this could be the Goblin's lamppost. Um, sort of set aside from everything, carved out of a single piece of stone, but I think this is where I'm gonna set our little tavern. And remember, we have three people we have Graham, how adorable is he? He is, remember, our own tavern owner, Graham of the Ten Winds, he's half orc. So I made a little card for him and I thought we could keep some of his stats on the back. We also have Ezri the Imposter, our half elven bouncer. He's a little grumpy, but you know, that's his personality quirk. And Folin of the Coastlines, she of course is our hostess. So these are going to be our starting characters along with Aussie the Ocelot. We have a little we have a little pet in our tavern and uh, I'll have to work on making a tavern map of what it looks like in there. Maybe as we play we'll get a better idea of what sort of a layout we have. But for starters this is where we are. All right. The other thing that we did and I want to be a big shout out, thank you to the people who played along. We have the beginning of our menu. And my my paint, my, <laughs> my drawing skills are very sad, but this is the Goblin's Lamppost. Uh, our food and drinks are, remember our signature drink, is named the Sand Wash. Cinnamon liqueur with clam juice. The slogan is guaranteed to wash the desert out your mouth, love it. We also saw sell ale it's good, and water clean and cold. Now, I forgot our food is grilled spice cakes. If anyone wants to take a, you know, stab at giving it a fun name and or slogan, tagline, I'm all for it. But this is what we're serving so far at the Goblin's Lamppost with our basic crew. All right, so. Let's get started. And for that, of course, we're gonna need our nice little tracking sheets here, as well as the book, which is full of all of the wonderful tables we're gonna be rolling on. So in order to roll, I need some dice. Hold up, hold up. Trusty old pencil. Bam! Let's play the broken cask. So the first thing we're gonna do is set the scene. This sort of establishes what's going on outside of our inn in our little oasis town. You don't have to do all these steps. Some of them are optional, but I'm just give it the full you know, flavor here. Let's go ahead and set a full scene. Um, the tables are season, weather, mood behind the scenes. And again, we're just gonna to flip to the tables and give them a roll. And the book says, imagine this as the wide exterior shot of your inn, looking clean and lovely wherever it is before we zoom in to discover what's going on inside. So between each ses session, we're going to reset our characters, we're gonna reset our inn, and we're gonna start clean, it's a new day, and we're gonna set this scene just to give us an idea of what's happening. Season is the one thing I believe you have to roll on because some events might, might have a seasonal trigger. All the rest, of course, are gonna be optional. So let's find out what season it is today. A 1d6, easy enough. A four, it is summer, it's hot, like, Hot, hot. All right, so I'm thinking maybe we'll increase the price of our cold, clear water. <laughs> Gotta make some money, right? Our weather is going to be six. Hail, ooh, 
Interesting. Hail in summer. I think I'm gonna re-roll that one. I mean, we could roll with it, but let's just see. How about extreme heat? All right, this makes more sense to me. It is hot summer in general, and we are in the middle of a heat wave. So what's the mood? Mm. How about soft firelight feels quiet, peaceful, contemplative, plus one M forward. Ooh, okay, so it's hot. It's a heat wave hot. It's just so hot that all people want to do is lie around and have a beautiful siesta somewhere cool. And of course, Goblin's lamppost, it is carved from a single piece of stone. It is a naturally air-conditioned location. And we have a bunch of people who want nothing more than to avoid the heat and be lazy. So we get plus one M moving forward. And we're gonna be rolling against these little modifiers plus this, this little M modifier just to refresh our memory here. Uh, it's body, heart, and mind. So we're gonna get a plus one to all of our um, tasks uh, that um, have to do with the mind just for this session. So on this little temporary conditions chart, we're gonna go down and we're gonna tick plus one mind. At the end of the session, we're gonna remove that. But for now, for now, people are lazing about talking about philosophy and the meaning of life and where, what's coming next, right? All right, the mood, we did that. Okay, behind the scenes. So since your last session, this is what's happened. Um, we'll roll on it, even though we haven't had one. Let's find out. Behind the scenes. Your staff went on to off to gather materials. Roll again. On a six, one of your staff has found an exotic material. Otherwise, it's normal material with no effect. Okay, let's see. A five. All right, so our staff went out, they bought some stuff, didn't find anything special, but we are fully stocked. So that's our scene set. And the last one are story threads. This is also optional. It's just a way to give narrative-minded players something to go on if it's fun and interesting for them to try and tie all these randomly generated events together into a cohesive narrative. Ooh, that definitely sounds like us, doesn't it? So let's go ahead and roll on the optional story threads. I need my second dice for this. And let's see what else is happening in our little oasis town. 10. A prophet has taken up lodging at the inn and is predicting everything that is happening. Okay, so obviously I know what we're talking about in the inn. We're trying to figure out how does this prophet know? Why is he speaking only truths? Interesting. So there's these cool little session logs where you can um, write everything down that's going on. I think since I'm recording it, I might, you know, just take some notes later. But normally you would write down um, what it is that's happening in your mood and your setup in your scene just to kind of keep you reminded. I guess we kind of need a name for our little town too. So if anyone has an idea for our, for our Oasis town, that would be wonderful. Okay, scene set. Profits here, heat wave. Got it. So we know what's going on outside. Now we're gonna look at what's going on inside. And this is sort of the meat of our session. And we're gonna keep taking all of these events until we're forced to stop. Either all of our staff is exhausted, we run out of money, or we stumble upon an event that says your day has ended. You can also optionally decide to close the doors if you feel like you're sort of pushing things. So let's roll on our event table and see what our first event of the day will be. A nine. Ooh, cooking order. People are hungry. What does that look like? So it looks like this is a D6. Let's see what the first order of the day is. We have all of our supplies, so hopefully. How about a two? How about, ooh, steak and mash. Okay, filling, tasty, and appealing. We hope. So our task is going to require a roll of a B3. If we hit, if we manage to make that roll, we have grill marks, bud, roll tips, which means our steak and mash comes out fabulous and our patrons are going to tip us well. If we miss though, steak is undercooked and the taters are overcooked, minus one to morale. All right, 
stop really fast since this is our first one and kind of talk about what these numbers and the effects mean. So the first thing that happens is we have this task which gives us a B3. So remember with our little stats back here, let's pull them up. Boo, boo, boo. B means we're looking at a body task. It's, phys it's a physical thing that we're gonna have to do, all right? So we get to decide who among our staff people are going to attempt this task, right? We have Fullen and Esri, and we're gonna assign one of them to this cooking task. Now, once a session, you may have your owner do the task. Your owner tends to have better stats and they won't lose morale, right? They own this place. Doesn't You can be as mean to them as they want. They're not going to quit. But your employees do have sort of a morale limit. And if we look down here, we can see that... Do, 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 do. Yep. Fullen, she has a plus zero to body tasks. All right. She only has one morale right now. So she isn't like super excited today. So if we assign her to this task and she fails it, we're going to lose her morale. Esri, however, he has plus one to body. He's, he's a hefty guy and he has a morale of two, which means he's, you know, feeling pretty good. He's feeling pretty good. He's thinking that he's going to, that he's going to have a good day. So he could definitely take a hit. Now, good old Graham, of course, he also has a plus one to body and he won't take a morale hit. But I think maybe we're going to send Esri back here to help out grilling these steaks. And we're going to have him try and roll a, a, a body task to see if he can perfect these grill marks. All right. So he gets plus one to his roll. And we know right here the task is... Uh, where was it? Steak and mash, B3. So if we meet the number or higher, we succeed. So a three, four, five or six, we're good to go. We're also adding plus one to it. So this is a pretty easy task, right? I think, I think Esri's got this. And we roll a three, which is great. Three plus one is a four. Beautiful grill marks. Good job, Esri. And we get two as a hit roll tips. Remember money? Money is big in this game. 1d6. Let's see how he does. He rolls a 3. 1d6 minus 1 gold. Ooh, okay, okay. He's out there. He's schmoozing the gas. He's maybe, maybe he's, he's, you know, flexing some muscles here and getting a showing off uh, on his grill marks. Let's see how well he can shenagle some tips. Ah, look at that. Four gold worth of tips. Love it. So let's go ahead and add that to our daily tally. Nice job, Esri. What a stud. Okay, he does more than just kick people out. He has, he has skills. He has skills. Okay. So back we go to the event table. We've served our first meal of the day. It was very well done. An 11. Oh no, a troublesome guest. Okay, somebody, who's wandering in here giving us a hard time? We run a decent establishment here, one with as few irritations as possible. Sometimes the rabble gets in the way. So who's our local troublemaker? A five, an irritating wizard. Um, maybe he's heard about our truth sayer and is walking around, you know, mansplaining one of those guys who when you go to the magic show has to tell you how the trick is done and ruins it for everyone. She won't stop bothering other patrons with her stories, right? She, you know, she's the one walking around saying like, well, actually, it isn't that impressive that he can speak the future? It is. It is, lady. So, ooh, an M6. This is going to be a hard one to hit. If we do it, though, she presents a small cash as proof of her latest adventure. We get some loot. If we miss, we roll a failure. M6. Oh, wow. Well, huh, good old Graham. He's got a plus two to his mind. 
maybe he can take her on. Um, the only other person would be Esri, and he's only got a plus one. So I think we're gonna send in Graham. I think Graham is gonna try and sit down this wizard and explain to her, you know, we don't all have to be in the spotlight all the time. Let's see if he can do it. So we are gonna add two, and we need to hit a six. Nope, nope, nope. This woman is not taking no for an answer. Let's roll a failure. Oh, the dreaded failure table. I don't want to come here very often, but unfortunately this troublesome guest, the character in question is injured or upset. Oh no, roll 1d6, three to six, take minus one morale, one to two, they are exhausted. Oh, that's interesting because we used our innkeeper and he cannot take a morale lost and he cannot become exhausted. So it's a good thing we used him. All right, remember we only get to use him once per session. So it's a good thing we did. But our failure, even though what the heck we'll roll on it, he would be exhausted. And so exhausted means you, normally it means you run out of morale for the day, you tick the little exhausted box and they are down for the count. You can't use them anymore during that day. Don't worry, next session, they're gonna rest and recover. But for now, Graham tried his best with that troublesome sorceress and failed. So that's his one big move for the day. So Graham, he is a bit discouraged, not gonna lie. Um, so he's gonna retire to the back rooms and maybe take a siesta himself. So Graham is out for the rest of our session. I should note, we did have plus one mind today. It didn't help us make that roll of six, but I did actually kind of forget about it. So Graham should have had a little more help. Even then though, he failed. So he's in the back room kind of blowing off some steam and we are left with Folan and Esri. So they can continue to take event tasks. There are some special actions we can take. I, I think we're gonna go a little farther today though. Let's see if these two can't handle the front room themselves. 10, trouble, oh no, this hot, terrible day. Things are not looking good and we aren't gonna be able to use Graham for this. So let's see what the trouble is. So let's roll our D6. It's a five, a bar fight breaks out. Of course it does. We have this terrible wizard who's still walking around muttering to herself. It's 10,000 degrees outside. I can see how tempers would end up flaring. This is a B6, oh, a body roll of six. Compare your roll to six. The difference is how many staff take minus one morale or your heroes become exhausted. So if we had heroes, we could decide to either take the bar fight out on our staff or we can take it out on our heroes. We haven't recruited any heroes yet. Right now, we just have Fulan and Ezri and obviously this is what Ezri was made for. He is our bouncer and I believe he gets a plus one to body. So it doesn't really matter because we're just going to uh, compare to a six. So we just need, we just need to roll high here. A two. Oh, I think that wipes us out. Uh, two minus six is four. So we have to take four points of minus one morale. We don't have that much. I think we only have three right now. We don't have any heroes to sacrifice to this. So... Sadly enough, um, I, I, I wonder if his body factor would come into play there. Probably not. It sounds like this is just roll compared to a beast, a, uh, a d6. I think this fight is going to end the day for Folan and Ezri. What a sad day to our first, our, our first experience at the Goblin's lamppost. We just had bad luck. It was one of those days where things didn't go well. So before we end, let's take a look at some of the special tasks that we can do. Special tasks we can take. First thing we can do is we can upgrade. We are a small tavern. 
we're just selling stuff. If we upgrade to an average drinkery, we're allowed to what's called flip common guest tasks. So if we roll a two, we can flip it to a five. Gives us some dice manipulation. That's always fun. And I believe, where is it to build? Uh, here it is, yes, for 10 gold. Whew, that's expensive. Um, we have a total of, oh, remember we did get those great tips and we started with 13. So we have 17 gold. It would be a big investment, but we could expand. I don't think we're quite there yet. Um, we can upgrade our guest rooms, our staff quarters, or our other rooms. And we'll maybe we'll think about that. Ooh, hire sounds exciting. We can hire more people to a staff. And you can see how with morale being so important and having your staff exhausted, that would definitely help us sort of increase our day if we have more hands on deck. So we can try and hire someone. It's, it's three gold. That seems pretty reasonable. Um, influence, influence is cool because you can, um, Go on to campaigns and increase your prestige level. That one costs 10 gold, so that's another spendy one. Prate, this is a fun one. This just means basically wander around your inn and chit chat. You take a roll, there's a risk, but if you do well, if you schmooze well, your prestige will rise, or you can go out on a quest. I think you have to have a hero though. Mm. Yeah, and we don't have a hero yet. So again, this one is probably a more of an advanced move. Now, shop is something we could definitely do. We can send one of our people out with five gold and see what they bring in. Different things will give us, you know, different bone eye. Sometimes you can even get some wondrous items, which are super cool. And magic people. Ooh, these guys take up one staff slot, whether or not you have the space until they leave. Nice. Um, again, these are kind of big wigs. I just don't think we're quite there yet for some of these, um, some of these more expensive actions, or sorry, special tasks. Now, the next thing we could do is we could take an action. All right. It's a busy life, that of an innkeeper, but there are still moments where one must roll up their sleeves and state, I'll do it myself. Once per session, you may choose to resolve a task as the innkeeper using your stats. All right. So we, oh, we did that one. Never mind. Oh, of course they're now. If we don't want to hire new people, we can also train. When there's a break in the day, it's important to look after your staff, to shape and mold them into the hospitality experts you expect to keep in your employ. So we can train, it costs five gold, and we're gonna roll and see how that resolves. We can treat a regular, this is fun, because you can kind of take them and level up your guest list so you get more tasks, uh, uh, sorry, more tips. I don't think, I think you have to have um, a regular. I don't think we have any regulars yet. And then session end and refresh. So I think maybe we want to invest in our staff. Now, right now we have the staff quarters. We only have two rooms with two staff. In order to be able to add another staff member, we need to have a place to house them. So before we can hire someone, we're gonna have to build another room. And of course, building a new room, that costs us 10 gold, ooh, which would leave us with seven. So, Here's the question I think we'll leave this session with, or I don't know, maybe I'll decide. Do we, <laughs> do we go for broke and build a room and hire a new staff member? Or do we want to maybe train up the ones we have and spend our money somewhere else? I really feel like more staff would be really nice. Although if we train them, they might get more morale. Let's check training. All right. so. It's five gold per training session. So for that same 10 gold that we could put aside to make a new room, we could train both Ezra and Fullen. Now it's not guaranteed, all right? Um, if we roll a one, only one of our people 
gets a little bit of experience, which isn't great. If we roll a two through five, one of our staff member either gets plus one to a stat or plus one morale. And on that lucky six, the whole staff gets to go. So as long as we don't roll a one, it might be worth it. So what do we think? Do we upgrade? Do we stick with the mat with with the people we've got? Do we train up Esri and Folin? Or do we build a new staff room and hire a new person? Now, if we built a new staff room and want to hire someone, let's look and see here. Yes, that's what I thought. So if we make a new room, we roll on the staff table to see who's available. So it will be a little bit of a hit or miss on who we pick up and what their stats are going to be. All right, sure thing or take the risk. I think, I think let's upgrade. Let's, let's, you know, I feel like we're new here. We're just starting things out. Let's see if we can't help out Folin and Ezri a little bit. I think I'm going to take the train action. I don't think we're quite ready to build up our inn. So let's spend five gold. All right, this is my little running tolu here. I'm going to say minus five. And let's take one training session. Let's see what we get. Five. Fabulous. Okay, so at least one of them was paying attention during training. Pick one staff to improve. Choose plus to their stat or plus to their morale. Ooh, all right. So let's look here. I would, I, I kind of feel like mm, maybe, maybe morale might be our best bet because poor Folan only, only has one morale and Oof, our stats aren't great either. Yeah, let's go for morale. Let's train up Folin and let's give her one more morale slot. So hopefully we can go a little longer before the day ends. Um, why not? Why not? Let's do it again. Let's go for another five gold and train up and hopefully this time Four, okay, same thing. Plus one stat or plus one morale. Okay, so let's let's up somebody's stats. I like um, that Folin has our heart. Mm, isn't that sweet? But I kind of feel like Ezra, our imposter, our, he's our bouncer. I feel like he needs to be better at body than just a plus one. So let's... Um, Give Ezra a set of barbells or a punching dummy or something. Let's you know he can go run around a sand dune and let's let's give him a plus one to his body stat, making it a plus two. I should probably have done this in pencil. Whatever, good enough. Okay, I think that's good. I think that's good for today, and that leaves us with. So we had thirteen gold. We spent ten, leaving us with seven gold. Okay. Is there anything else we can do for seven gold? So with our staff fully trained and poor Graham sulking in the, la in the back room, I think we are done for our session. So let's go ahead and end it. And the first thing we have to do is mark experience. So if any of our staff successfully hit a task, we're gonna give them some XP. And remember, we did have a strong start because it turns out Esri, He's got some mad barbecue skills. So he uh, produced a delicious steak in the beginning. So he is gonna get one experience point. If we ever get up to three, we can cash it in for like a free training session. But I think he was the only one who managed to grab some XP. We we got, we got smashed pretty fast in this game, to be honest. Uh, so then we're gonna go down and we're going to remove our temporary condition. Everybody is going to be unexhausted for tomorrow. Um, we're not going to lose any prestige or anything like that. Uh, it, it, our session didn't end because of, of anything too terrifying. But I think that'll be our first day at the Goblin's Lamp Post. Our poor little guys, they tried their best, but this terrible hot weather and this darn pesky wizard, it just 
just didn't work out for us. We did end up though with a bank of seven gold, which is lovely. Hopefully tomorrow we can uh, make some better tips and build that up because I would love to add some rooms to our beautiful little tavern, get some more staff, maybe um, get some guest rooms going. We didn't we didn't get to have any guests uh, come in because you can you can switch those over to loyal customers. We can also recruit heroes and send them on quests. There's a lot more to do in this game. We've only touched the tip of the iceberg, but I wanted to show you how it played. Don't worry, we'll come back and do some more. We do need a name for our Oasis Town. So if you have an idea of what this little, this little area is, uh, uh, where the Goblin Outpost is located, I would love to know it. And of course, we need the name for our signature spiced cake dish. But for now, my friends, I had a wonderful time playing The Broken Cask. It is a lovely little relaxing game. And uh, I think next time we come back, maybe this heat spell will have passed and things will have settled down and we'll be able to sell a few beers and tell a few tales. But until then, I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll catch you next time.